welcome back to the next class. So, we closed the previous class with when I was giving the example of how human nose can distinguish between different kind of volatiles emanating from different sources. As a matter of fact, you will be surprised to know that if you compare human nose versus a dog nose versus a insect nose, you will realize that these are extremely evolved, these are second in line and we are the third one. Because this is evolutionarily more beneficial, because we can walk, we can see the world. So, our nasal sensing has been compromised over the years versus a dog versus an insect. Now, coming back where we talked about the different cell types of the body. Cell types of the body. excitable, this is where we non excitable. Now, we are dealing with excitable cells and I told you excitable cells are the ones we generate biological or electrical impulse. And this electrical impulse varies with the types of stimulus. Type of stimulus have different kind of electrical impulse, right. Now, first we will talk about what are the different excitable cells of our body. One of the major excitable cells are neurons, which forms our nervous system. The other one is cardiac myocytes, which form the major part of the heart and cardiac pacemakers. Third are a hybrid kind of cells which are called, which are involved in all sorts of secretion by using electrical impulse. They are called neuroendocrine cells. So, in the whole animal kingdom, these are the only set of cells which are electrically active. So, these are all electrically active and you can measure their electrical potential. So, when we talk about electrically active, what does that mean? Do they generate current or do they continuously generate current? What kind of current are those? So, when you have to define electrically active, you have to define what is it, how it works, what, how and when and where. These questions have to be answered before you understand what does electrically active cells means. Now, what is electrical activity of a cell? which can be capitalized or utilized for development of electrochemical biosensors. What is the
electrical activity of a cell which could be used for biosensing. So, cells like neurons in your body or cells like neurons, cardiomyocytes. If you place an electrode outside their body, outside their A and you place an electrode inside them and you try to measure the voltage across them. So, this is electrode outside E O and this is the electrode inside E I. So, and if you measure the difference E O minus E I are same here. So, for example, this is the electrode out there and here is the electrode outside and you are trying to measure the voltage across them. This voltage tells most of these electrically active cells are sitting at a negative potential of around minus 70 millivolt. Sometime it goes all the way to minus 80 millivolt and there are some specialized cells which sits at minus 40 millivolt. So, those specialized cells are these ones which are sitting at minus 40 millivolt to minus 35 millivolt and these cells are spontaneously active. I will talk about it, what does a spontaneous activity means. While cardiomyocytes and neurons are mostly sitting at minus 70 millivolt to minus 80 millivolt and so do the endocrine cells. Okay. These are the basic. Now, if you plot what does that mean of this particular situation, if you have a graph paper like this and your y axis is here you have the y axis, here you have the x axis plus y minus y. So, this is 10, this is 20, this is 30, this is 40, this is 50, this is 60, this is 70, this is 80. Similarly, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So, and this is all in millivolt, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and here you have minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50, minus 60, minus 70, minus 80, these are all in millivolt. So, and x axis is your time in milliseconds. Okay. That time you can vary depending on what time scale you want to see the event. What you will observe? Those cells what we talk about? Neurons, cardiomyocytes, and NE neuroendocrine cells, these cells are sitting, the voltmeter reading will be like this or somewhere like this over a period of time. Okay. On the contrary, pacemaker cells will be sitting at minus 40. Now, 
you will observe something very interesting with the pacemaker cell. When I am just putting that line, it is exactly not like that. What you will observe is something very interesting is something like this. And when I see you, they are spontaneously active. That is exactly what I meant by that spontaneously why they are spontaneously active and what really causes this kind of shift is a different story and I will come in detail about it in the coming classes. At this point, I am just describing the event. On the other hand, the other set of electrically active cells and these are all The other ones under certain specific stimulus shows a very interesting event like this. They are sitting like this and something like this, but this process is not spontaneous. This process of shooting this change so, what you are seeing is the change in the voltage which is happening across their membrane. It is overshooting the 0. Almost it will feel like the cell is kind of in a state of shock or the membrane has completely changed its polarity. As I have mentioned that with respect to inside, inside is more negative. So, certainly at momentarily there is a change in the polarity. From minus 70, it goes all the way to some say plus 10 and then it again comes back. There is this unique electrical event which happens in these cells. And this electrical event and this traces what you see, they are famously termed in the biological literature as action potentials. And these action potentials have features of unique frequencies and shape. Their frequency and their shape changes depending on the stimulus. Okay. Why these action potentials are generated? What are those unique things? In order to give you a prelude to that, I will take you back to one of the minimally invasive sensors, which I have talked to you earlier and I told you that we will come back to this one on a very different context and that I did in the last class is this picture, where you see there is an anode, there is a cathode and you see these molecules, these ions, sodium ion, chloride ion, not taking into account the glucose at this point, because that is not needed, but these are some of the critical ions and plus potassium ions. And if you go back to some of the places where we discussed about it is walk you through when we talked about by impedance spectroscopy, we talked about sodium, we talked about potassium ions causing changes in the conductivity of the RBC membrane. So, these two ions plus calcium plus chloride plays vital role in action potential. 
which we discussed in the bioimpedance spectroscopy and later we talked about them in reverse iridophoresis RI technique. Now, here we are getting back to the absolute fundamental basics of how they do that. Okay. So, now we talked about sodium, talked about potassium, we talked about chloride, we talked about calcium. These four ions play a critical role. How? Question is how. Now, you all are aware about sea water or ocean water. And you all are well versed with the fact that sea or ocean water is a very high concentration of sodium chloride. N A plus C L. Now, it is believed that life has evolved from the sea water. And in extreme high salinity, very few life forms survive. Mostly life form survives in the land, but in order to survive, you have to develop a mechanism to ensure that you are not getting desiccated by the huge amount of NaCl. Back, we do not know when the first cell got evolved, say 4 billion years ago or 2 billion years ago, we do not know whether it is a microbial cell or what cell, we do not know. But what it did, we know it today. The first cell what evolved? developed a compartment where it could ensure the compartment has lesser concentration of sodium versus outside which has a higher concentration of sodium. Further, inside it is bestowed with higher concentration of potassium, whereas outside it is a lower concentration of potassium and inside it develops a pocket of where not freely moving calcium. So, outside you have more chloride and sodium, inside the cell you have less sodium and less chloride. So, if you in the light of this look at the membrane, just let me or the cellular structure, it will look like this. You have high amount of sodium chloride, these are negatively charged ions and positively charged ion outside. Whereas, inside there is a lesser amount of sodium lesser amount of chloride, but there is a higher amount of potassium. And there is a lesser amount of potassium outside. Now, this difference of sodium and potassium leads to two different kind of forces. There is a chemical differential in terms of if you have higher sodium here and lower sodium, most likely what will happen if you connect them. So, both the levels will come to the same point. So, there is a chemical 
imbalance and there is a charge imbalance. Why there is a charge imbalance? Because if your inside has lesser sodium and higher has higher sodium, outside has higher sodium and inside you have more potassium and outside it is less potassium. What we have observed when we put a electrode inside versus outside, this is what we observed in the cell. In every cell of the body, they sit at minus 80 millivolt. So, that means there is a potential difference. Now, the question is why the cell and what determines this electrical potential point 1 and why the cell and how the cell maintains this particular electrode potential. And that will bring us to some of the most fundamental laws called Nernst equation. And in the next class, we will talk in depth about Nernst equation, we will talk about the mechanism of action potentials and how these could be exploited, utilized for our core goal which is whole cell biosensors. That is where we have started this topic that we will talk about whole cell biosensors or whole cell electrochemical biosensing. So, with this I will close the class and in the next class we will move on to how action potentials are generated what is Nernst equation and what are ion channels, what are voltage gated ion channels, what are ligand gated ion channels and how these different kind of voltage gating, ligand gating, light sensitive channels, vibration sensitive channels rather they are called technically mechano sensitive channels. And these are all electrically active elements of our body, how these could be utilized for the next generation of biosensor development. So, with this I close the class and in the next class we will pursue our journey into whole cell biosensing and how these are leading way for human on a chip systems, which is the next frontier. Thank you.